What's up, y'all? This is Tom, and this is Like a Math Class. In this video, we're going to talk about how compound interest connects with the idea of geometric sequences, and we're going to look at two different formulas that you could use to find compound interest. And then on top of that, uh, let's step back a little bit and actually figure out what is compound interest. Let's get to it. With geometric sequences, we have a formula that looks something like u of n equals u of 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And this, this is used uh, because we often have our first term and then we add some or we multiply some value uh, over and over again. So in this case, we might have u of 1 equals 1,000. Then we would have u of 2 equals 1,000 times some common ratio. And u of 3 would be equal 1,000 times that common ratio two times, or uh, 1,000 r squared, and so on. So we came up with this formula of u of n being 1,000 times r to the n minus one power. Now, that's all fine. Now with compound interest, n refers to time. So we need to see what happens before any time passes, so we kind of change up our formula a little bit. So we have this formula of u of n equals u of zero times r to the n power. And now that's very similar to what we did uh, with our uh, geometric sequence formula. But again, since r is equal to time, or sorry, since n is equal to time, now we don't, u of zero is no time has passed. So maybe that's our 1000. And then after maybe one week, one year, one whatever, we have some addition, some interest applied to this 1,000. So now we're going to have 1,000 times r. And after two weeks, two months, two years, whatever the case might be, you're going to have r squared. So we're, we're kind of following this idea down here. So all we're doing is really just shifting our terms. This is going to 0, and this is, is losing that minus 1, because here we can see that the powers match our term numbers. Now. Another, another formula that you might be familiar with, uh, this one is also in the formula book, and this here is really just this without doing some, uh, some mental math. So let's see, and let's, let's see how these two things compare, um, and we can um, kind of compare and contrast the two, so that way when you're working with these, you know which one you want to use. Let's start with our left side. So this thing is basically going to be your final value, whatever you're trying to calculate. Over here, this one is called future value. Then the next thing we have is called our principal. Principal is the amount that you start with. And so in, in the examples that we gave down here, 1,000 would be our principal. And this is our what, what they call our principal or we call it our principal, or we also call it our present value. Then we have our common ratio. Our common ratio over here is really uh, the rate. This is our interest rate converted to compounding periods. as a decimal. And so that might seem like a, a really big jump here, but you're gonna see, this is probably things that you typically do uh, on your own. Uh, this is gonna be stuff that, that you naturally uh, do. So all of this right here is this whole process. This is converting your interest rate to a decimal. This is converting interest rate to a to, uh, to compounding rates as a decimal. So those two things are essentially the same. Here, um, just to kind of, as a, as a side note as well, this R here is your uh, annual interest rate, an annual interest rate. Sometimes that's called per annum per annum, and that's abbreviated as PA. Um, that's the, I'm going to change this from common ratio to your annual 
interest rate converted to compounding periods. The annual rate is actually, it's, it's the total interest that you have over the entire year, but you're given little chunks of it over uh, whatever compounding periods you have. So if you have 3.5% and you're compounding monthly, then you have to take that 3.5% and you have to chop it into 12 pieces for each month or into four pieces if you're doing it quarterly or daily or, or whatever the case might be. So, um, so here again, over here we do a little bit of work here. It's just starting with our, our, our um, we're starting with our annual interest rate. Now this dividing by 100, you know, that all that's, all that's doing is that's just converting it to a decimal. Uh, it's pretty straightforward with that. And then this K, this K is just the compounding period per year. Just like before, N, N is our time. N is our time. And, and typically, N is uh, referenced in terms of years. So you can see that these are going to be very similar. We've got the same future value. We have our same principal or present value. We have it converting, whether we do it in our head or we're converting it uh, in long form. And we have our time frame. So you can see these two things are, are very similar to each other. Um, it's just a matter of preference, really. Are you comfortable with using the geometric sequence where you kind of shift it over to, to U of zero instead of U of one? Or do you want to use the formula booklet, which is totally recommended uh, as well? Uh, you just have to know yourself, right? The, the formula booklet will give you all this information. But if you know that you're more comfortable using the geometric sequence, then you should use the geometric sequence. So let's look at an example here. A savings account has an interest rate of 3.5% per PA. This is uh, per, per annum. So this would be our per year compounded monthly. Find the amount someone would have after 18 months. Okay, so this is going to be our N value. If they invested uh, 15 or $5,000. Our beginning amount is equal to 5,000. We know that we're going to be We've got 3.5% per year. We're going to be compounding monthly and we have 18 months. All right, so let's set this up using both formulas. So our first formula, if we use our geometric sequence, uh, we've got u of n equals u of zero r to the n power. Okay, so we have our formula. We have all of our information. Let's now calculate what this will be after 18 months. So we begin by converting our, in, our annual interest rate to a decimal, 0 0.035. Then we break it into our compounding periods, 12. And that's going to be, so here we can see I actually already calculated it for us. So it's going to be 0. 0.029167. Now, of course, uh, you're going to want to use uh, your full value for this. You, you generally don't want to round, but really, as, as far as this goes out, this is not going to be significant when we calculate uh, the actual value. And then we have to do, add this to 1. So 1 plus this value, zero, 1 plus 0. 0029167. So we end up with our interest rate of 1.002967. And what that one does again, that, that just brings in this amount. It, it kind of roll, it kind of rolls everything up with it. So if you've got 5,000 and you multiply it by an interest rate, uh, you generally just calculate the interest and then you add it back on. And then you, uh, you have that 5,000 plus the interest rate, you or 5,000 plus the interest that you've earned, and then you calculate the interest rate and you add it back on. Instead of having to do that add back on every time, if you just do one plus the interest rate, or one 100% plus the interest rate, or one plus the interest, uh, the interest rate converted to a decimal, which we're doing, then all, we're, all that's happening is we are taking that value and we're just adding it back on every time instead of having to take it, add it, take it, add it, take it, add it. So it's, it's kind of a shortcut with that. 
So our final formula is going to be u of n equals 5,000 times uh, times 1.0029167 to the 18th power. So u of n, the amount after actually u of 18, we should say. So the amount of u of 18 is going to be equal to 5,000 times, oh, I've got it right up here. $5,269.11, 11.3, but since we're talking about dollar amounts, then really we're, we're going to round and we can say 5269.11. So there is our amount after 18 months. Now let's take a look at this future value one. So we said the future value Let's see, let's go back up here. The future value is going to be equal to the present value times all of this. This is the same thing that we just did, but we're going to drop in our values in here. Uh, and then where n is our number of years and k is our number of compounding periods per that year. So let's see how this works. Our future value is equal to, uh, that's what we're looking for. Our present value is equal to 5,000, that's what we're depositing. Again, our, uh, our R is equal to 3.5% or 3.5, uh, 3 let's just say, per year. Our K, our K is 12, because it's 12 months. We're compounding monthly, so that will be 12. And then, uh, let's see, 12 months, 18 months is one and a half years. So n is going to equal 1.5, one and a half years. So here we go. The future value is equal to the present value times, times 1 plus 3.5 divided by 100 times, times k, times 12. And that's going to be to the, n, or the kn power 12 times 1.5. So here, now when we start calculating all this stuff inside here, uh, we'll see that these two, we'll see that these two things are going to end up being the same thing. So we've got our 5,000 here, and 1 plus 3.5 divided by 100 times 12. All right, so let's calculate this. 1 Plus, here's a little, t a little trick for you. If you do alpha and then you do y equals, you've got a fraction option, and that will allow you to put in exactly what you are trying to do without having to worry about brackets or keeping your uh, decimals or, or your uh, numerator and denominator um, sorted. So there we go, 1.291667, which is the same thing that we got over here. So 1.0029167, and let's just double check. What is 12 times 1.5? You probably already know this. Ah, that's going to be 18. Hey, look at that. We are now at the same exact spot. So really this boils down to what you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with the geometric uh, sequence and you can do all that converting of the interest rate in your head because it just kind of makes sense to you that way, then use the geometric sequence. Don't overcomplicate it with this giant uh, future value equation. If you're not real comfortable with that, then I highly recommend that you use the future value uh, equation that's in the formula booklet because you'll have everything laid out for you. There's a, a couple things in there that will show you what the different uh, variables mean in the formula booklet, uh, but you really should have a good understanding of how it works. Hopefully this is helpful in finding and understanding what compound interest is. Really, it's just calculating one thing on top of the other, which is, is essentially a geometric sequence. So uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video.